All right, let's go ahead and solve this absolute value inequality. Now, this one's already isolated the absolute value for us. For example, if it was a, maybe a 2 in front of that, 2 times that absolute value, we would divide both sides by 2, but that is not the case. They've made this one kind of simple for us. Now, since this absolute value is less than 15, uh, if I were to compare this, uh, it would also be greater than a negative 15. Now, that's just kind of the rule. If we wanted to consider this looking uh, at splitting this up, right, we could split this up to 3x minus 6 is less than 15. That will be true for the positive value. But if we make this 3x minus 6 uh, and compare it to negative 15, it's going to flip the sign like that, okay? And that's because it's sandwiched in between there. It's, it's in that range. It can't be greater than 15. And since it's an absolute value, it can go into the negatives, but it can't go farther than negative 15 because then it would make that uh, absolute value bigger than 15, which would make that a false statement. So let's go ahead and add 6 to both sides of both equations. And these are the two equations that are two inequalities that we have instead. And since we have a coefficient of x, which we don't want, we're going to need to divide both sides by 3 on both equations. And here are our two inequalities. If we were to look at a number line, so this is negative 3, 7 is over here, 0 is about right there. Well, since x is greater than negative 3, it's not included and it goes to the right. But it will have to stop at 7. X is less than 7, so this line goes to the left. It's just the intersection of these two, right? It's limited between those two values. So the final thing we would really want to do on this problem is to write the answer in interval notation. We can see it's sandwiched between negative 3 and 7. That's it. This is the interval 